Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to spring training here in the Nashville Stars franchise. Now, going into season number three, we are going with the youth movement, that's for sure. We brought in Rafael Devers in free agency. We brought in James Caprellian via trade. We brought in Jack Leiter via trade, and then Dom Thompson-Williams as well as a depth outfielder. We're really sticking to our guns here and building with the kind of organization that we have. You know, the young guys in the middle, Shea Whitcomb, along with John Dumont, along with other guys that are coming up in the organization, such as Kerry Doss. That's kind of how we're just going to build this team. I think trades going forward are going to be very, very limited. Now, this is the episode where I do reveal your uh, prospects that you guys submitted. Now, I took the prospects from two seasons ago and I renamed all of the first round draft picks like I did last year and kind of how I did it this year because this draft class was very weak. I only improved ratings very minimally so you won't see the the higher overall guys like you saw last season and then you know maybe this year some of you guys from last year will be at the MLB level but a lot of you guys that are at a ball you guys will probably be down there probably for the remainder of the season but i did not change potential ratings that's how i do it i do not like to change potentials just because i want to keep it still realistic whatever they drafted you at whatever your potential was that's what you will remain there are some guys that are higher you know you will see some 70s overall and we are coming up on kind of the guys that i think will be the best prospects and these aren't necessarily guys that are a potential but are guys maybe are that are high overall and we are coming up on the end of these prospects but a guy i want to highlight here is hunter thornton b potential plays for the yankees and he is the number five rated pitcher in the organization right now and then cam edwards now i'm disappointed with cam edwards because he's 18 years old very very raw and young but he is at the a ball so a ball level so he's not going to be able to get moved up at all to the mlb level i'm hoping that the cpu fixes that i mean maybe they did i'm not sure but um moving once you're in a ball i think the cpu just doesn't move you up now let's talk about our real prospects here we always add three dylan cruz is the first he is probably the consensus number one draft pick two seasons from now out of lsu he is an excellent uh, excellent player then max clark who is probably the best prep hitter and I don't know if you guys, you know, follow prep hitters at all, prep baseball, but he is the top hitter for sure. And then Christian Little is Vanderbilt's star pitcher. He is probably going to be a top 10 pick as well. And I included one more guy, and he is going to be our second round draft pick. And it's Enrique Bradfield from Vanderbilt. I really, really like him. And he is a guy that I think, you know, it, I really think is going to have a bright MLB career. And I thought it'd be cool to have at least one guy on our team that is renamed to a real life prospect also. The other prospects that we included on our team are Ben Swerve. He is a good first baseman, good hitting first baseman. Lonnie Chisenhall, not the actual Lonnie Chisenhall, but the same name actually. A good defensive player. Prince Lewis, a starting pitcher with a uh, pretty good potential. He's at B potential. He's gonna be a guy that I can develop. But the most ready guy right now is Zach Davis. The lowest ceiling, but the highest floor right now. He's in the 70s overall. I believe he's at 74. So we will see how he does in the minor leagues. And he could get moved up pretty quickly as a long reliever. I don't know if he'll be a starter, but definitely a long reliever. Now, some uh, position battles I want to look at here in the spring. We have a couple. John Dumont did grow out his hair, got a little beard, so he looks a bit different this year. He will move over to second base, actually, during this season. I will actually have Shea Wickham at short with Raviel Dever signing at third base. He will be the full-time third baseman there. Tyson King will be a utility guy. I'm not really sure where he will play in the infield, but he can play all four positions. Um, and then in the outfield, Kendrick Franklin Cole is listed as a left fielder, and that's what he's going to be. But he is battling for a spot along with Victor Robles, James Wood, and Colin Ozuna. I think those four guys are really competing for three spots, and that's just how it's going to be here in the spring. Now we're going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to get into some highlights of all of the spring training games. Not all of them, obviously, but a lot of spring training games. It's not going to be any like... Uh, normal format like I cover the games I want to cover like specific at bats specific scenarios specific players 
and so you guys can get a good look at them in the spring here is Kohei Arihara who I am really really uh debating on having in the future of this rotation now he is around high 70s overall um not not quite high 70s probably like 76 77 overall I guess that's high but it's not 78 79 but you know he's a guy that is over in his 30s he is an older pitcher we have two in our rotation right now that are in their 30s and that's Kohei and that's James Caprellian now that we just acquired via trade I like both of these guys we will see you know if they will be the future of this rotation but here is Kendrick Franklin Cole who really needs to have a big year because he was an excellent minor league bat. I mean, he was excellent. He slugged over 900, I believe, when we first moved him up. And then he was hitting like 290. But now since going to the MLB, he's been kind of terrible. But here is Dom Thompson Williams, who we acquired via trade from the Mariners. I am excited for his bat, mainly because in the Mariners organization, they signed Harrison Bader to a free agent deal. They actually have Kalenic. They have Kyle Lewis. They have Julio Rodriguez. They have the prospects coming up, and I think Dom Thompson Williams just kind of gets lost at that. He is is 28 years old, I believe, but still a good bench bat. He's going to be competing with Victor Robles, who you just saw fly out to left field there. He comes up for his third at bat of the game. This one's a frozen rope up the middle, and that's going to be a at least a single. It could have been a double right there if he would have kept running, but he is a very good bat. He hits the ball well. And one thing I like about hitters like him is that when he gets a good pitch, he doesn't miss. Like this, Victor Robles comes up and hits a fly ball to left field. Like, those are pitches you just can't miss. He has 71 vision, too. I'm not sure why Victor Robles is kind of a below-average hitter. He's an obviously a plus fielder. I mean, a plus-plus fielder. But his hitting, just it just rubs you the wrong way. KFC is going to have to outduel him in the spring in order for him to make that team over Robles. But here he goes 0 for 4 in this game versus the Twins with that lazy fly ball to right field. The Stars win this one 2 to 1, three hits, and two of them came from Dom Thompson Williams. John Dumont got the other one, but a good win here. And like I said, I like what I see from Thompson Williams. He has some decent fielding ratings too. His uh, attributes are all in the 70s as far as fielding goes. Here is Rafael Devers up to the plate. You know he's got that 98 power versus right. He's going to hit three in our lineup, that's for sure. Either three or two. I'm not exactly sure right now, but it's pretty – well, I'm pretty sure it's going to be three right now. We'll see what happens at the top of our lineup, though. Here is Dom Thompson-Williams again. I want to get a closer look at him. Ground ball to second, and he's got actually decent speed at 79. He beats out this double play. That's going to be useful. Bringing up Rafael Devers with the high in tight fastball. He just gets enough wood on it. Such a good player. But Thompson Williams makes it all the way to third on that. And I think that his speed is definitely going to be valuable. Like I said, I don't think he's going to be the starter uh, day one. But Thompson Williams is a guy that I can definitely give some shine to. He's going to tag up from home. And these are the type of guys that I value. Guys that get on base, that can run the base as well. Because it's going to be... Uh, in the middle of our order, Devers and Herrera, who are going to be at the plate with men on first, men on second in scoring position. And they're going to have to get those RBIs. And we're going to have to manufacture those runs by getting guys on base. Something we didn't do well last year, getting guys on base. So I definitely want to do that. Here is Jimmy Sandoval, who was our second round pick in season number one. He actually strikes out on that one, but an errant throw. Tyson King up to the plate. Now, I will make the graphic to show you guys my prospect rankings in a couple of episodes. He walks Devers home, and he scores, making it 5-1. to one. John Dumont to the plate. He needs a big bounce back year this year, but if he hits like this, it will be easy. That's a shot down the left field line. It will score two. It's now a 7-1 to one game. John Dumont is one of those guys that I think is going to have a bright future. I'm not too worried about Dumont because... He gets on base, and he will swipe a bag or two. Like, that's what his game is, and he's a good fielder. I think the thing with KFC is that his bat is his weapon, but then he's a bad fielder. So <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, you you got to hit the ball well if you're not going to be a good fielder. So in the offseason from the Rangers, we acquired Jack Leiter. Now, 
I know a lot of you guys said that they wouldn't trade him, but you got to think of this scenario. It's going to be two years into the franchise. Like, just think about it. He's got two years under his belt. He's had an average year and a below average year in the minors. And we traded Matthew Thompson, who had a great year in the minors, led the minors in ERA like that good as a starter. And I think the Rangers would be willing to sign up for that. And Ryan Mountcastle, who is not bad. Obviously, he was isn't a superstar, but he is a very good bat. And he's 26 years old. And they got him signed for $10 million. It's a pretty good deal. Here is Reese Hoskins at the plate. He hits one deep to right field. This one will stay in the yard, though. KFC is back at the track. And that will be three outs in this inning. Jack Leiter doesn't look bad pitching you know I think what he needs to work on is his command I think just locating pitches but I don't think he looked too bad Jay Wickham at the plate now hitting 182 in the spring he hits one to second base this one probably will be two and it is it does score one runner with bases loaded no outs bringing up Jorge Alfaro who is returning to Nashville on a two-year 13 million dollar deal he is a good defensive catcher with that 99 arm. That's a big reason why I brought him back. If he didn't have that strong arm, I probably wouldn't have brought him back and went with Kurt Zambrano. But here is James Wood competing for that center field job. That's gone. If he can hit like this, it's going to be an easy decision because one thing that you know Victor Robles can't do, it's hit. And James Wood can. I think that's a huge difference. 423 off the scoreboard. Jack Ladder on the mound here with a four-run cushion in the bottom of the second inning facing uh, this Phillies lineup. Yaro Munoz to the plate, and he will walk. So now they have a man on first base. Rafael Marchand to the plate, hit and run situation on for the Phillies. 3-2 count, two outs, and it's just going to be a fly ball to left field. Like I said, I'm, I'm up in the air about who's going to be our corner outfielders. Obviously, Herrera is going to be there. But I don't know who's going to play in the right. We don't have a strong arm in the outfield. That's the only thing. Dom Thompson-Williams, I believe, has the strongest arm uh, as far as corner outfielders go. So it's going to be interesting. I, I don't know what I'm going to do there. I think that's going to be kind of just a downfall this year. We don't have a good corner outfield arm. And here is Jesus Aguilar returning to Nashville. He gets a hit down the right field line, a little bloop single. It scores one, five nothing. You can see the potential with this offense. Just a mix of young guys and veterans I think is going to be good for this organization. Here is John Dumont at the plate. He swings low at a circle changeup. That one was in the dirt. Two outs, bringing up Shea Whitcomb. Runners on the corners, and he hits one well down the left field line. That one will score one. Jesus Aguilar only with eight speed will get to third base, and it will be an RBI double for Shea Whitcomb. Gold Glove winner at third base last season. We actually have three Gold Glovers on this team. Jorge Alfaro was a Gold Glover behind the plate. Jesus Aguilar won Gold Glove with the Red Sox. His second Gold Glove in a row. He won that glow glove in year one with us and then we have Shea Wickham who moves over to shortstop so infield defensively we're pretty good I'm just worried about the outfield arms there is James Wood getting that throw in from deep center field it looks like he's going to be a good defensive center fielder it brings up Nick Castellanos to the plate now with two outs and just a chopper in front of the pitcher it's going to be an out. Jack Leiter only pitched him three innings this game, but he looks pretty good. The Phillies actually end up coming back and winning this one. Spring training results don't really matter. You just really care about the players, to be honest. And then Austin Pruitt came in. Our only all-star, he gets the loss. James Wood, three for four in this game. He is really hitting the ball well to start out the spring. So I want to highlight our number one overall pick in season number one, Stephen Brennan. He is probably going to be in the minors this entire year again, and I want him to develop. Hopefully he gets up to about 77, 78 overall. Wishful thinking 79, but that would have to be a very good year. I let those guys progress naturally, and looking at him in the spring, you know, this is where he struggles. Players just hit him well, so... He just got to get some more movement on those pitches. Here's Cabrian Hayes. He gets one up in the zone and just drives this one off of the left field wall. It will score one. 
And I think his uh, command is very good. He can locate his pitches. He hits the corners well. I just think that, you know, his movement on his fastball, his movement on his off-speed pitches is just not there. This one was left right over the middle. He missed his spot definitely on that one. That one probably should have been gone, or at least a gapper, and ends up being just a fly ball. Bringing up Michael Chavez in the fifth spot, hitting this one well left field. And this is what I'm talking about. I mean, look at all these balls. They're all well hit. And that's something that, you know, Brendan was going to have to work on. Good thing we did acquire some veterans, though, as he, they can kind of, you know, take up the spot while he develops. But here is Tyson King driving this one deep to left center. That one is gone here in the bottom of the first inning. Tyson King, this is the potential that I wanted out of him. And he can really swing the bat. He just got to do it consistently. And I think one thing I'm worried about with Tyson King is exactly what we saw, what we're seeing with KFC coming to the MLB level and struggling. But one guy that is not struggling is Colin Ozuna. That one is gone. Colin Ozuna hit about 240 last year, but there were flashes in games where you were like, wow, this guy can hit. He might not just be a rotational outfielder. He could potentially be a starter. Now, he has good reaction and good fielding. His arm isn't there, but that brings up James Wood, who is absolutely hitting the ball well in the spring. That one's gone to left field. Back to back to back jacks here for the Nashville Stars. And those were all from young guys. Tyson King, Colin Ozuna, who was a little bit older, but still in his 20s, and then James Wood. I mean, these guys can hit. This is something we've been lacking at the MLB level. Here is Colin Ozuna up for his fourth at bat, and he just hits the ball hard every single time. One thing I love about him, and at 87 speed, he beats that one out. Colin Ozuna is an underrated player in this organization. He has 87 speed, and things like this go a long way. Beating this ball out after it was just knocked down, get, just getting on base. Bringing up James Wood, who's two for three again, and he goes three for four for the second straight user-controlled game here. And now we have a man, man on first and second. It's going to bring up Kurt Zambrano, who is battling for that catcher spot. I still think Jorge Alfaro is the starter, but he hits one hard up the middle. And look at Ozuna scoring from second. I mean, this is what I want from a leadoff batter. I think that Ozuna is a leadoff guy. I think that he is just a pure natural base runner. He hits the ball hard and well, and you never know. At some games, he can lead off with home runs. John Dumont was a leadoff hitter in the uh, minors, but I don't think he's that here in the majors unless we see a dramatic jump from him, but he hits one hard to left side right there and gets a hit. And we end up winning this game 7-3. to three. The young guys absolutely show out in this one. James Wood, Colin Ozuna, and Tyson King all hit home runs. Jesus Aguilar actually goes 2-4 for four as well. But we are doing well in the spring. I'm seeing some good signs for this team. I think our goal this year is really to get out of the dumps. I mean, we finished with the sixth worst, worst record two straight seasons. We definitely need to just improve that. KFC kind of continues to struggle here in the spring. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. I might end up having him in the minors to start the season, get his bat warm, or I might just get him some at-bats at the major league level. Who knows? And then when the Triple H season starts, I will move him down. Who knows? I'm not sure. There is Robles, but he's been struggling in the spring too. KFC up again with men on first and second. This one is going to be just a fly ball to center field. Two to one game here versus the Detroit Tigers. Bringing up Kerry Doss, our top prospect. I believe he comes to the season ranked as a number seven prospect in baseball. This one's hit well to left field. This one's gone. Kerry Doss is such a dialed in hitter. And what I mean by that is that when he hits the ball, I mean, it's, it's usually like a line drive. It's not even, he doesn't even hit pop-ups. I mean, that right there is a pop-up, but it's not a high pop-up. Like it was kind of a lower trajectory uh, swing right there as it brings up Rafael Devers and <laughs> It's going to be fun to play with Devers. That 98 power, that was versus a left-handed pitcher, but still that 98 power versus right is going to be a lot of fun. Bring up Jesus Aguilar, and he goes deep. Aguilar returns to Nashville. It's going to be a lot of fun with these bats. I think that this is definitely going to be the best team that we've fielded so far in this series. And seeing some of the original guys still around, especially a guy like Aguilar who left and came back. And remember, we didn't leave on bad terms. I want to keep this realistic because I don't want to re-sign guys that we had traded. 
And one option we had in free agency was re-signing Miguel Rojas. We did not decide to do that because I want to wanted to be realistic. What's the chances that a guy re-signs after being traded? Pretty slim. But Jesus Aguilar, we let walk in free agency. He signed a one-year deal with the Red Sox. He returns to Nashville. He liked it here. So we end up going 15 and 14 in the spring. And I really like what I see from some of these young guys. Jesus Aguilar absolutely tore it up in the spring. 990 OPS, 353 average. I mean, slugged at 608. Kurt Zambrano hit well, too. I'm very, very excited for him. Colin Ozuna hit 315 in the spring with a 921 OPS. The guy is, I think he just won the job in the outfield. I don't know which one, left field or right field, but I think he's there. And so did James Wood. I mean, the guy, he's young. He's a good bat, a good fielder, great arm. I think he's going to develop into something very, very special. He is just 20 years old. Tyson King hit the ball well, too, 281. I'm happy about that. Dom Thompson-Williams, I like I said, I didn't acquire him to be a starter, but I think he's going to be a surprise guy who's going to start a lot of games for us. Jorge Alfaro hit the ball well, 259 average, and that's around what I want to see. I want that old on-base percentage to go up a little bit. He had 12 RBIs in the spring. I believe that led the uh, team in the spring. KFC ended up getting the average up to 231, but obviously not impressive. 747 OPS is not uh, anything to sneeze at. G- John Dumont, 275 average, but only slugged or had only had an OPS of 730. Rafael Devers, a little struggled a little bit. I'm not too worried about it, obviously. Aduba Herrera also had a lower average, but I was trying to get the young guys a lot of at-bats here in the spring, so once they started to struggle, I just sat them the rest of the spring. Buddha Bless, who was a depth infielder, I'm not sure if he'll make the squad. Gary Doss only hit 206. He's one of those guys I think I might move down to AAA. We'll see. Shea Wickham kind of struggled too. I'm not too worried about him. He usually you know, has his ups and downs like he did in the, season, or in the first season in his rookie year. Remember, they... I think it was Troy Quincy and Shea Wickham. They finished one and two in the AL Rookie of the Year voting. So that's pretty cool that we have two top young guys in the MLB. And then looking at our pitchers, our pitchers actually struggled in the spring, but I'm not too worried about it. I was more focused on hitting, so I didn't pitch too much. Um, But Steven Brennan actually did pretty bad. So he's going to definitely be in double A. I'm not going to put him in triple A. I'm going to put him in double A to start the season and then eventually probably move him up to triple A and let him get some, you know, pitching versus some MLB bats that just didn't make the opening day roster. So we'll see how this season goes. I am actually very excited. And I think that, you know, James Wood is probably going to start over Victor Robles in center. I think that's the biggest story coming into opening day. I think James Wood is just a good young bat, excellent fielder. I think he's just an all-around stud. So that's going to do it here in the spring. Let me know what you guys think I should do with KFC and even Kerry Doss. I mean, both of them kind of struggled in the spring. Maybe I should start them out at the minors and then eventually bring them up, get them some at-bats down there. But hit subscribe, hit that like button. Who is your guy coming into the season? Who is, you know, the guy you guys think is going to show out and really surprise some guys? So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm about my pledge. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that board. Quit to say my piece. I'm so after school special. She brainy but them jeans looking like.